all the judges in the uh, civil division, and I think all the judges are have a, a Zoom license. So we're able to have all our hearings in Zoom. Initially, we were doing some hearings in teleconference, and that is not as seamless as the Zoom process. Um, I just want to emphasize, and I know you've heard this many times, but because we're not doing trials, the judges are available for special sets just about every day. And we have openings in our schedule every day and we want people to sign up so that we can have hearings and again, using Zoom. And uh, I have been really very pleased with how things work. People have been, uh, been very professional, very thorough, and I've been very pleased with how things have been going. Now, a couple other things to talk about is uh, experiments that we're running, uh, in, which involves conducting trials by Zoom. Um, when we come back, when we return, uh, or when, it, when things return to semi-normal, one of the challenges is gonna be getting jury trials or getting trials, uh, specifically jury trials. How are we gonna get jurors to come in? Jurors are gonna be faced with all the, um, the challenges that exist today, coupled with uh, employment issues. So that may be an issue coupled with the fact that the criminal division, because of due process issues, will get priority. So are there, let's look for alternatives to maybe help move the cases. And hopefully with the consent of the attorneys, perhaps we can do, uh, we can do uh, trials by Zoom. Uh, this past week, uh, on our end, the judges and, we, and the staff attorneys, we conducted a mock jury trial in a, uh, in a uh, auto, auto tort case. And um, we thought it went pretty well, it was pretty smooth. I mean, there are challenges to deal with uh, in particular, how do you select a jury? How do you get jurors in and things of that sort? But these are issues that we can accomplish or we can address and, and successfully accomplish if we work with you, uh, Aboda, the bar, and perhaps uh, help uh, move things along uh, so that we can you know, try this out. Because we're, we're gonna have a real challenge to get jury trials uh, really in the next several months. We, uh, because of the reasons stated. Uh, I've also worked with, as, as uh, Jeff has, has talked about, we had a conference call yesterday, a number of our judges attended, uh, uh, Judge Phillips, Judge, Chief Judge Tudor, uh, Judge Howry, Judge Perlman, Judge, Judge Hames, a number of the judges participated. It was a, a countrywide uh, conference call with the Civil Jury Project out of NYU. And there were some federal judges, our judges, state judges, and we are going to try to work and come up with a, with a framework uh, for these uh, Zoom jury trials. At a minimum, we should be able to do Zoom non-jury trials, but uh, it is pretty ambitious, but Zoom jury trials. But I would invite uh, uh, Mitch and the folks at, uh, at uh, Aboda to try to work with us and see if we can get something refined, so perhaps that'll be, be uh, something we can accomplish. And once we get back, I think this, this tech, um, Zoom will be very helpful in the courtroom. You know, when we conduct hearings, that'll save a lot of time, effort for you, your clients, and we could do these instead of doing a telephone hearing, we could do these by Zoom. So I think this has really been a blessing in, 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 in some respects in our ability to, uh, to test this out and this new technology. And uh, so far, so good. It's really, uh, really been very few kinks in the process. And I think I speak for my colleagues when they're very happy with how this, is, uh, how this has progressed. With that in mind, I want to know if anyone has any uh, questions or comments uh, in light of my remarks. I'd be happy to address them. Well, Judge Levinson, with regard, since we're going to be hearing from uh, Sean Goldstein and Sam Coffey regarding motion practice and making it easier for judges receiving motions digitally and uh, some other things with that, can you talk about some of the things that um, have been difficult for you? Uh, with the hearing, some of the, some things may yes. be obvious, but some things may not be. Well, I, obviously, uh, we do not want to receive pleadings by mail because most of the judges and most, if not all, the JAs are working from home, uh, and they're we're, we're working remotely. So when you submit your motions, you can send them to the division email, but the better course is to submit them. Um, if, if it's for a hearing, submit them on uh, CMS and put them in supporting documents. And uh, it's, it's no different than what we've done when we were in the uh, courthouse, uh, but just do not send them by mail. 
And if you have, for example, if you have a motion for rehearing or motion for reconsideration, that you're going to have to email to us uh, because if you file it, we're not going to see it. So uh, the, the clerk doesn't send us copies of motions that are filed. So you need to send the motions. Uh, again, we all each have a division email to send them by that. And you know, the way you, the way you prepare your motions, you do it the way you would when we're in the courthouse, you know? Uh, just uh, respond in time so we can prepare and review and so we can effectively rule. Um, and obviously the proposed orders or the agreed orders are coming in through the, uh, the, the workbench on the CMS portal. So that's how that how that's going. Um, you know, I have had a little, fr a few frustrations when people are filing their motions, you know, 11.30 the night before the hearing. That always makes it a challenge for us. So if you give us time to read it, we'll read it. Uh, and also give your opposing counsel time to read it. I think it'll make it a lot smoother. So I don't know if that gives you any insight. I, I think it does. And uh, again, we're just, we're all kind of learning all this together. So it's really important to hear from the judges what you know is the easiest way to get the information to you to make sure that uh, the hearing runs smoothly because a lot can go wrong. I mean, you could be hosting two meetings at the same time or yeah. something like that. So we want to make sure that uh, you know things are uh, going smooth, and that's part of the reason I I thought you know today's uh, presentation was uh, particularly particularly important. How many? Uh, like uniform motion calendar hearings, do you think you've you've heard so far? I think that overall, the judges have heard over a thousand hearings. Um, I you know I, I usually average about fifteen or twenty a day. Um, one of the things that was suggested by one of my colleagues, Judge Perlman, is that when you enter Zoom, you can you can identify your name, which is helpful to us. Some people have identified by uh, their email or by uh, their phone number, identified by name. But e even more helpful would be perhaps identify your case and then we can queue you up when to call you. I mean, I admit everybody from the, we admit everybody from the waiting room, but it's hard to figure out who's on what. Um, in the beginning, I usually, I usually come online about 8, 15, 8, 20. And at that point, some people show up and then I just find out what case they're on. And then we try to pair them up. But if you put the name of your case, that'll make it a lot easier. Yeah. And all you have to do to change your name is really look at your rectangular box click the three buttons, the three dots there, and rename yourself. I, and I think that's a good idea with maybe putting down your case number, maybe putting plaintiff or defense in there, yeah. uh, just so you know if you have a team. Case numbers are not the easiest for us. Names yeah. are a, a little better as we run the docket. And when you, when you, um, your, your assistants probably know this better, but when you do your notice of hearing, uh, there's a sequence number and that's the number we have on the docket. But it, it, you know, if you can't do it, it's no problem. It did make it go a little quicker. But again, I haven't really had any issues with, I think the Zoom has worked out really well. And I, I'm wondering how, from your perspective as lawyers, uh, from the attorney's perspective, how it's worked out. But I think it's worked out pretty well from our perspective as judges. Well, but I see somebody, somebody's actually taking advantage of the hand up feature. Uh, Kareen Hodak, Hodak, do you have a question? You have to unmute her, I think. You have to, un yeah, well, let me unmute you. Corrine, do you have a question? I do, thank you. Judge Levinson, I was just wondering on the um, Zoom jury trials and the mock trials, or the trial that you did, um, I have a, several questions, but first is, um, how does the jury deliberate? Do they go into some private room and Zoom to do that? And also, is that the first time that the jury has interaction um, with each other? Or do they have interaction with each other? Um, uh, on I think that's a really good question. Um, in the Zoom software, there's a breakout room. And what we, we, when we did the jury trial, whenever there was a, uh, a sidebar or uh, like a motion for directed verdict or otherwise, they moved us out into a breakout room. And uh, when we deliberate, or we're, when, when we're in the breakout room, they can't hear us, and we weren't recorded. So that's what we did. We actually, when we were in the breakout room, I was one of the jurors, we were talking about movies. So but, uh, that, that's, that's how they do it. And also, Zoom enables you to, um, through the share screen, you can you know, share exhibits. What was important in the trial was all the exhibits were agreed to up front beforehand, so there really weren't any surprises. Um, that all, everything went very smoothly. 
Um, I think the challenge more than anything is going to be the jury selection. And I think there's some ideas that we have uh, to do that. But I think we should get on that and really start talking about that. Um, we have conference calls on a weekly basis through the Civil Jury Project. So we get input from national uh, around the country. In fact, one of the members is, is the chief judge in the uh, Southern District of Houston. Um, and she's, uh, as a federal judge, she's open to it. So I think that it's something we should all look at. Does anybody else uh, have any uh, questions for Judge Levinson? Yes, I do. Can you hear me? Yes, I saw Mitch had a question. Where's Mitch? Hi. Good morning, everybody. And good morning, Judge, and everybody else, all the other judges. Thanks for being with us. Uh, when I tried to change my name to put the test or put the case name under, uh, if you look at my square there, it will say Mitch Chester test case, and then it's cut off. So it has a limited amount of text available to fill in the case name. Uh, so I can, what I'm doing, and the reason I've asked to, to, to ask you this question, uh, probably over the weekend, I'm writing Zoom with suggestions on how we can improve this for judges uh, to improve your experience. So for example, if there's additional tools or icons or little things like having more room for the name so you can identify people by plaintiff, defendant, or party or whatever, I'm going to send that to the chief legal officer uh, but I'd, I'd love to have your all your input uh, so that we can make sure that when we do that, hopefully they will be in a position to uh, give us some of the stuff that will help make your job easier. One of the things we're looking at is having a separate server for judges and courts. We discovered after we found out about Zoom being adaptable to this process that Zoom has something for government. Well, in my position, I believe they should be having something for the judiciary for the courts that might add an extra level of security. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know and I will be happy to include that. And Judge Levinson, I will share that letter with you before I send it out if you have any additions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I'll, I'll share that with the chief judge and the administrative judge and civil and my, and my other colleagues so that they can also review it and make suggestions. Mitch, if you want to give your email address or put it on the uh put it in, rename yourself with the email address. I'm sure some people would like it. I'll try to do that. Let's see if it fits. I may have it. I may have to shorten my name. Well, regardless, put it in the chat so that uh, if anybody has any suggestions, uh, they can send them directly to you. I think that would be uh, yeah, here a good it is. thing. It cuts off mchester at mitchellchester.com, two L's in Mitchell. Terrific. All right. Has well, anybody, have any of the lawyers have experienced issues or challenges with the with the uh, the Zoom hearings that you want to raise with the with the judges? Anyone had any uh, positive or negative issues with uh, the Zoom hearings? They want to share. Okay. I'm sure there there will uh, be <laughs> as as we go on, but um, you know if they, if anybody does have any issues, you can always send them to us at abodaftl at gmail.com and we will make sure that we get in touch uh, with the judiciary and address some of those questions as well. Okay. Um, again, please emphasize, please do not mail us things, okay? Because that's, please use email or file things online. We'd really appreciate it. No problem. Well, thank you so much for, for being with us. Uh, was somebody saying something? Yeah, oh. yeah, Jeff, this is uh, Cameron Barnard. How are you doing? Um, I, I just had a quick question for Judge Levinson, and thank you very much for, for, uh, for helping and putting this on and everything. Um, have you guys conducted any evidentiary hearings so far via Zoom where witnesses uh, are put on to testify and that type of thing? Yes, I believe, uh, I believe Judge Frank had an evidentiary hearing. He was able to do it. I think it was a, a, an attorney's fee hearing, and he was able to do that. Um, but I, I don't see any, I don't see why we can't have an evidentiary hearing as long as you can see the witnesses, because that's obviously how you evaluate the credibility. I don't see there's a, an issue with that. So, so the, in, in the, in the one that you're talking about where the witnesses, um, I'm assuming weren't with the lawyer, but in the same Zoom meeting? I believe so. Yes. Okay. I, I don't know for sure, but I think that's the case. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Well, again, thank you, Judge Levinson for your time and, for really uh, helping us move our cases forward during uh, unthinkably difficult 
uh, circumstances. So we really do appreciate uh, you being a leader in that in that regard. Jeff, I always believe in taking a negative and make it into a positive. And what we're doing here is we look how much we've accomplished with the Zoom technology. And that will be with us, right, Mitch? That'll be with us well after we get past this this, uh, this pandemic. So that's a good thing. Absolutely. Right. Well, now I, I would like to move on. Uh, the purpose of this CLE, and we did get approved for uh, CLE credit uh, for this for one hour. Um, I had a conversation with one of our longtime members, Sam Coffey, and he was explaining to me how he was embedding the case law directly into the PDFs to make it easier for the judges for his hearings. And he had some suggestions about doing that as well as just a basic overview of redlining for your staff in your Word documents, because we're used to being all together. And I know that me personally, I still use some paper for my corrections and everything else. And it's, uh, it's been an adjustment. So uh, Sam is a uh, wonderful attorney. He's a, a very accomplished civil trial lawyer. Uh, very forward thinking. And I know him and Sean Goldstein have a lot of good ideas as to what they were doing before the COVID-19 uh, pandemic occurred and some of the things they're doing now uh, to make their hearings run smoother. So I'm, I'm very, uh, very honored to have Sam Coffey and Sean Goldstein with us today. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing your presentation. Uh, thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Judge Levinson. Can you hear me okay, uh, Jeff? Yes, we hear you fine. Okay, very good. Uh, so the problem is in today's environment, if we have a stack of case law to present to the court attached to a motion, we need to get it to the court electronically, number one. But number two, our audience, the court and opposing counsel now needs to read and digest a large volume of material. So what we've done in our office is we've tried to find a way to make it easier to go through uh, an inch of paper or six inches of paper through using Adobe software to bookmark the, uh, the case law. It's also recyclable. So if we use it for a motion like a Daubert motion, which is fairly common to all of us in our practice, if we have the bookmarked uh, highlighted uh, uh, case law in an Adobe PDF, there's a way that we can cross reference the motion citations with the Adobe case law attachments so that you can quickly go through that uh, case law very, very quickly uh, in a matter of just a few minutes and see what's uh, referenced by a particular attorney. Jeff, could you throw the screen share over to Sean Goldstein, please? Oh, sure. Absolutely. He, he, he should be able to do it. Um, I think I can do it. Yes. Uh, I'm Sean Goldstein. I work with Sam Coffey. Thank you for the opportunity to present with you guys. Um, I'm sure we've all prepared large briefs for judges to read some because case laws attached to them They can get a little difficult to remain organized something like this Or it's a massive amount of case law to come in and have to go flip through each individual page to get to the exhibit to see what it says or Revisit the different case law and that really can be a waste of time where seconds turn into minutes minutes turn into hours hours can turn into days of wasted time as we get through the year and as Sam touched on, we can create bookmarks through Adobe. Let me go ahead and see if I can share my screen over to here. And so what I have here is one of our Daubert motions. And through using bookmarks, there's two really nice features of it. If we go over here to the left side, I've already created a few for this document. You click on this side here, the bookmark tab. And you'll see that you can navigate through the book through a nice side, easy readable table of contents. But also another benefit to that is as we're reading through the document, if we scroll down to let's say exhibit one here and judge wants to view exhibit one, we can very easily go over to bookmarks, click it, and it'll take us right to the bookmark. It'll take us right to the exhibit rather than needing to flip through all of the pages. If we look at it in a much larger brief, such as for case law for a Daubert motion, you can see how the bookmark tabs here can actually be really, really beneficial in breaking down a massive table of contents where you can also create sub bookmarks. So if I wanna to go to the case law itself, I can go to Allison McGain 
and it'll take me right to the beginning of that case law. If I want to also make a bookmark for the different highlights within that case law to showcase to the judge, I can go ahead and create one as well where it takes you right to the highlighted case law. Instead of having to flip through and just going at the beginning and having to read the entire case, I can take the reader directly to the important part. Now, this is great, but we can also get more intuitive than this. We're not just limited to bookmarks here. Another great feature for all types of motions or briefs, especially larger briefs, with a lot of case law, we can create what's called a link on the cited case law, which takes the reader directly to that as well. So instead of having the bookmarks here on the left-hand side, we can actually highlight over the text here and the reader can click and be taken directly to the destination where the link is. Now, I understand this is great. This is a little more productive. This is a little more efficient, but Sean, I still need to navigate all the way back up to my saved document, such as if I was in a brief here and I'm reading through, if we go back to exhibit one, and if I click and make this a link, it takes me here, but now I have to scroll all the way back up to the top. Well, some of you might be thinking ahead of me a little bit here. With the power of the link, we can actually do it the reverse as well. I can make this entire page as an exhibit into a clickable link, where now if I click it, it takes me right back to where I was reading the document originally. So I don't lose my place as I was going through. I don't have to scroll back through this mountain of documents and lose my place, especially when you only have one screen and you can't spread out the documents all around you. Now, what happens if the case law attachments aren't in the same file? Let's assume for a minute that this is actually a smaller brief than 103 pages, that it's maybe a five or seven page brief. And the case law is attached as separate documents. So what I would like to show you is the behind where I'm this uh, program. It's a folder with three case laws. So if we go to our Daubert memorandum, as long as the file is locally stored on the hard drive, so for instance, if the judge is able to download the case law to their hard drive, I don't know the capabilities necessarily, but this provides another option. You can actually click on this too and set the link to open a local document, to open it here for you in Adobe as well. Now, we can take it one step further as well. For instance, if there is a certain program that the judge prefers, whether it be Westlaw or LexisNexis, you can also have that link open up to their favorite database. So for instance, for USB Frazier, if we click on it, it can take us directly to the LexisNexis page or Westlaw of your choice. And I'll show you real quick also. Now, what happens if we don't have Adobe. What happens if I'm traveling and I'm outside the office and I'm not at my current work computer? If I have my laptop, my iPad, or my phone, for instance, and I receive one of these documents and I wanna look over it. Well, there's another feature that you can do as well. So I'm just gonna move this over real quick. I'm going to open the Daubert motion here in Google Chrome, and this will work with any web browser. Let me see if I can switch my screen over to that. Um, trying to see how to do that. One second here. Uh, new share. Let me go to this one. All right. Can everyone see the Chrome? Everyone's okay. Everyone can see it. Yeah. Okay. So. With the power of links, you don't actually need Adobe for that either. You can actually open this if you don't have Adobe and we scroll down to exhibit one again. Oh, I think I scrolled a little far past it. There it is. With the links, they're actually embedded into the PDF even if you open it in a web browser document. So if I click it, it'll take me directly to the exhibit, the destination where I want the reader to see. And then if I click this again, because it's a link, it'll take the reader directly back to where they were as they're reading through the document. And this can work with case law, exhibits, however you want. The only limitation to doing it through Chrome or Edge is that you can't load local files if they're not attached to the document. So I'm happy to show how to create a bookmark real quick. Let me switch that back over and create a link. Uh, one second, let me do new share.
and we'll go over to the PDF. So now let's say we want to make a, we'll do it right here. We'll do the affidavit. If we want to make a bookmark to the affidavit, you scroll to the page that you want to see, you zoom in or zoom out, depending on what the area is that you want to see. And you go over here to the bookmarks tab and you click right here, new bookmark. And this can be labeled whatever you want. This can be labeled affidavit. This can be, if we change over to the Daubert case law and we go over to the bookmarks here, this can be labeled highlighting group number one, or you can change it to be what the highlight is actually about. With regard to links, I can do the same thing. That's a little different of a process. I find that it works really well if you use them together because then you have this mini table of contents over here as you're reading to keep yourself organized in a large document. If you want to create a link, what you do is, let's say we want to do William Fisher here. We would go over to edit PDF and you'll go over here to the top toolbar, link, add, edit, web, or document link. We click on that. And now we'll scroll through, see photo attached exhibit one. We'll highlight the portion with the rectangle. We wanna make invisible rectangle so it doesn't show an actual rectangle when you're reading it. And we go to go to a page view. Next, and you'll scroll to where your destination is. So if our destination is exhibit one, we can scroll down to it. I already have it conveniently placed here in a bookmark. Sean? Yes, sir. We can't see what you're doing. I just saw somebody else post that. I was thinking okay. the same thing. I, I, for some reason, I can't see uh, huh. how you're doing it. I can't see uh, your toolbar with Chrome at the top. Okay. Um, let me see. I can see the Adobe Exhibit 1 page now, Sean, up on that screen. And your, okay. no, your cursor is now moving. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Is that resolved? Everything's okay? I think so. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> Our plan after the fact is if people like this technology, yeah. we wanted to provide the, uh, the best practices and steps uh, to you, uh, President Edelman, mm -hmm. and if people, you can distribute it to whoever you like. That is very generous, and we'll definitely uh, do that, Sam. I really appreciate it. Now, there was one other thing I'd like to pass on. I think we all know how to use Word, but there's much more to take advantage of through redlining, working collaboratively at the same time, and inserting comments. Uh, I'm gonna let Sam go ahead and take that over. Okay, so uh, Sean, why don't you pull up the Word document on your screen, we'll use your screen. Okay. Uh, so we work collaboratively here, and on a normal day, 50% of our staff is virtual. Today, 75% of our staff are virtual, but it does not slow us down. We keep on moving through the system and we do both uh, state court and federal court work. So we're involved with a lot of Daubert briefing. We've actually argued in the last two weeks, a couple of Daubert evidentiary hearings via Zoom and it's been wonderful. Uh, why don't you go to that paragraph number eight, Sean, so we can start working collaboratively with the document. Sure. And if you could show track changes, please. Mm -hmm. So if we're working here together in the document, uh, and we don't like what one says versus what another says. You can see up top there, uh, there's an SC in the corner. That's me working in Sean's documents and I can add changes in and I put a new paragraph number nine in and I can redline out the stuff that doesn't make sense in a document. Uh, like this comment here about uh, FSU football. So I can delete out Sean's comment and I can put in something about the Miami Hurricanes uh, beating FSU year after year after year collaboratively in the document back and forth. It takes a couple of minutes for the track changes to occur, but I'm going to put down the historical football scores for the Canes over FSU and removing his uh, pure opinion testimony that FSU is number one. We can do this collaboratively within our office working side by side or we can do it with our virtual team members outside the office and you see it took a couple seconds delay, but I can put that change in. We can accept or reject changes over the course of time. And we can crank out about a 20 page technical document in an eight hour workday, uh, three or four of us working on it. Uh, we tend to have our administrative staff really format and make the document look pretty. Uh, we put the, uh, the summaries of the testimony in there and craft the legal arguments. And we use a template motion, Daubert motion typically as a starting point. We do other kinds of complex uh, evidentiary motions and uh, 
uh, substantive motions this way too, and it seems to be pretty effective. This is working with Microsoft Word in the online version, so it's saved to SharePoint. And the way we do this is we open up a Microsoft Word document. Sean, could you go to the Home tab and just show the Share button for a second, please? Sure. And up, yeah, so Sean clicks that share button there. He shares the document with somebody as an email and you just put down the email address for the person and they get involved with the document. The, the trick is uh, what Sean has to do is he has to send it and then he's not going to do it right now, but he typically close the document on his desktop computer. He'd go to his sent email and open up the version in the sent email. And the reason for that is Instead of working on a local desktop version of Microsoft Word, you want to be working with Microsoft Word online. And that allows us to have edits that uh, work perfectly uh, in real time, and you don't get errors. If you, one person's working on desktop and one person's working in the cloud, we find we get errors. But that's extremely useful. Sean, could you go over to Microsoft Teams, please, and look at the order in the, uh, the Lara case that needs an edit? And pull that up for everybody to look at and see if we can approve that change that Rebecca made about 15 minutes ago. Sure thing. Let me pull that up. If anyone is using Microsoft Teams, it's a great service. It has the screen share capability like Zoom. It has the video conferencing like Zoom, but it also allows us to work collaboratively on documents. So yeah, open that order up, please. He's opened up the same document online now, and we're negotiating language changes here. So Let's see, plaintiff will provide documents to be shown to the witness or opposing counsel at least one week prior to scheduled deposition. So opposing counsel can provide documents to opponent. To opponent. Please approve that change and let Rebecca send that to the court for entry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an order in a hearing yesterday. Uh, and we're working with Rebecca who's working from her home in North Miami Beach on a home computer. Uh, what we do is we set up our staff with uh, triple monitor arrays. So they have three monitors, they're 27 inch monitors in front of them. and uh, we can work with people that are home-based because our half our staff on a normal day is uh, virtual. And now 75% of our team is virtual, but we're not missing a beat. Uh, we're, we're keeping up with the, the pressures of the litigation and we're cranking out high quality documents in real time. This is actually making us much more efficient in my mind to be able to work in one place. Uh, in the last uh, couple of days using uh, uh, the Microsoft Teams product, we're doing a new product liability claim involving a dangerous drug called Zantac, and we've fielded 50 new Zantac product liability cancer leads. And through our intake team, we've called these folks back, and we've uh, onboarded a majority of those cases, and we have nurse paralegals working on these cases remotely too. So instead of spending more money, uh, we think we're trying to work uh, smarter instead of working harder. We certainly put in our, our legal time uh, analyzing these things, but we can work collaboratively. Gone are the days of printing the documents or, uh, you know, redlining the documents in, on paper and having to hand them back to somebody. Uh, we're using these online tools. The other great feature that we use is we use uh, dictation. So in uh, the Microsoft Word desktop version, also for Outlook, there's a dictation feature. If you're not dictating your, uh, your text right now, you can do that. And I'm a terrible typist. I'm not real fast, uh, but I can voice dictate 200 plus words a minute and use the keyboard to clean it up. And that's making us much more efficient too. Those are the real high points. Do you have any other comments, Sean, or thoughts about this that you need to add in that I've missed? Uh, one other comment would be, for instance, if Sam and I are working on this collaboratively and we find that we want to insert something such as his Miami statistics, um, if we want to insert an exhibit or something else and the paralegal isn't available at the time or one of us isn't available at the time, rather than sending a text message or an email or something excessive or having to call them and say, hey, do this, what we can do is I can type it in here. And what I tend to do is to highlight it, I'll go to insert and I'll put a comment on there. And to anyone that's been invited to work on the document, I can at and type in their name here, it'll auto populate. And I can put in a comment, please add exhibit to attach. And they'll be sent a notification so that they don't have to be looking on this screen directly, they could be working on another document at the same time, and still get the notification here so that everyone stays in the loop. And that's it. Sean, so when we're people are doing, we're using this, uh, we're using Word, the online version is the easiest way to do it? Sure, 
you can open it up in desktop version, but we tend to see that it's a little bit laggy in between inputs. So really experiment on with yourselves and see, but I think online version works just fine as well. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any uh, questions right now? You can try the raise your hand feature if you'd like. Just want to make sure everybody's had a chance to uh, chance to speak. And how long have you been using uh, doing your motions like this, uh, Sam, Sean? Uh, Sean, clearly Sean's the brains of the operation and he came to me uh, fresh out of FSU law school last summer. So as soon as Sean came on board, we, uh, we upgraded our Microsoft accounts. Uh, we onboarded Microsoft Teams the last 12 months, but we've been really working collaboratively since probably the end of the summer and it's been a game changer for us. Absolutely. Yeah, something I also want to mention, you mentioned about the dictation uh, feature. I'm sure uh, some some people know about Rev.com. I've been using that to dictate because it's about 99% accurate. They charge $1.25 a minute. But if you're trying to gather your thoughts, I've found it to be extremely helpful. And, uh, you know, a lot less creativity from Siri or whatever the dictation software you're using on the computer. We like the stuff that's native to Microsoft and it's free. If you look at the microphone in the top right corner, that's mm -hmm. an updated version of Microsoft and it's a free uh, add-in and it's working off the Microsoft server and it's pretty darn accurate now. Pretty right? accurate. I'll have to give yes, that, give that a, a try for sure. Um, well, does anybody else have, uh, have any questions? This is going to be uh, posted on the abodaftl.org website uh, for anybody who missed it or missed the time uh, because of the, the delay. Uh, but I, I can't thank uh, you and Sean enough for showing us this because I really think that this is uh, the way all of us need to learn how to practice. I think it's going to make it easier for the judges, easier for us. Uh, I've got my uh, work cut out for me as well uh, with this because some of this is, is very new to me. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I, you approached me uh, about this way of doing things with motions and uh, I am very, very open into tapping into the skills of our ABOTA members. We have some really talented people as a member of this or in this organization. And if you have something that you think that you could help our members and help the judiciary, um, please email me abotaftl at gmail.com. Uh, we would love to have you as a presenter. Uh, there are CLE credits for this presentation today. Uh, before I give you that, I want to mention that uh, ABOTA is, a, is uh, sponsoring the Pantry of Broward. It's a cause that is near and dear uh, to uh, Mitchell Chester's heart. And I know he's involved with the uh, the powers that be over there. And it's a wonderful organization. They're giving food to a lot of people that have lost their jobs in our community. And uh, they're really a terrific organization. I would encourage you to go to our website and learn more information about them. And if you can make a donation, uh, please do so. Uh, let me post up the CLE credits real quick. As you can, you see that certificate of acc accreditation? Can everyone see it? Okay, the reference number is 2002-366-N. 2002-366-N. If you don't get it, email us and we will be happy to get it for you. Um, again, I just wanna you know, thank everybody for participating in this call, in particular, uh, Sam Coffey and uh, Sean Goldstein. I wanna thank Judge Levinson for always being a friend of Aboda and really uh, going My out pleasure. of his way. My so, pleasure. Well, you're, you're, it really is appreciated. And uh, you know, the judiciary in Broward County really has led the way uh, throughout the state. Um, and I really, you know, appreciate that. And it's very obvious when we're doing these webinars, the involvement we're getting from the judges, uh, they really do want to help us 
move our cases because we all know it's going to be difficult when the courts officially open up. But even if we can get 25, 30% of uh, what we were before, that's a lot better than zero. And that's certainly gone a long way. And Sam, you'll send me that documentation yes, sir. And, uh, for everybody so that we can put it on the website. Yes, sir. Uh, we can also, if the, if the courts are interested in this kind of technology, we could give them the suggested steps that they may give to lawyers submitting briefs to them to make their job easier if they like it. Uh, the whole idea was to kind of get the court's feedback. If this is helpful to them, uh, we'd like to uh, help the court. If there's something we could do better and the court can tell us that too, we're glad to improve our process. Well, that's terrific. Well, I mean, we're, we're talking about uh, several different uh, future webinars. I'm going to try to keep doing this on Fridays. Uh, there's been some talk about virtual jury trials. Judge Levinson touched on that uh, and some other uh, topics as well. But again, I encourage you, if you have a topic that you think would be helpful to our members, helpful to the legal community, I want you to reach out to me. Give me a call, 954-478-1997. Uh, I'm Jeff Edelman, and I thank everybody for, for being here today. I uh, I hope to you know, see you all very, very soon, but I will definitely be seeing you for a Zoom conference next week. You take care and uh, call me if uh, you have any questions. Thank you.